Noon on the dial. We're going to get rolling, folks. The reason, by the way, I'm Charles Alexander. I am a full-time business coach, and I am also owner of my own small business, creating explainer videos for busy professionals. The purpose of teaching this LinkedIn Live here for the next 30 minutes is twofold. First and foremost, as a small business coach, one of the things I've learned over the past 16 years is two out of every three small businesses in the first five years fail, which is terribly sad. A uh, wide variety of reasons, primarily now more than ever, is a, a lack of clarity and promotion and marketing. People don't know about who you are or what you do. And I can tell you as a father of three with kids ages 14, 11, and 10, all with an entrepreneurial spirit, I can't have two of those little monsters living in my bonus room forever. Also, as a guy that creates explainer videos for busy professionals, I see people get this confused quite a bit. So the, before we talk about how to create your own content and then where to share it, let's first and foremost look at something very basic. What is the difference between lead content uh, content, and then marketing, lead generation? I see these get confused quite a bit. So I made it super simple here. Let me make this a little bigger for you. Folks, content is the tool we use that accompanies lead generating activities. Content on its own is not really a lead generating activity. So what do I say? What do I think of when I say content? Well, of course, I'm creating explainer videos. That's the first thing I always think of, but it doesn't have to be animated. It can be like we're doing now, your own video. It can be images, preferably your smiling face. It can be written blog posts. It can be lead magnets, which, you know, white papers, guides, cheat sheets, things that people will give you an email for. It can be the audio that accompanies the podcast. It can be the recorded webinar like I will try to use for this later. It can be social media posts. That on its own is content. Now, when I say a lead generating activity, well, that's how you get people to see your content. That's how you get people to notice you. Lead generating activities. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger for you. There you go. More, more of it, less of me. Well, the lead generating activities, uh, email marketing, even cold emails, and I'm not against People doing a little bit of prospecting where it makes sense, going to networking events, speaking engagements, ads for anything, asking for referrals. By the way, referrals, word of mouth, fantastic. I love the fact that so many of us try to live and die by those, but they're not always super reliable. When I speak to someone who's been in business for a long time, 15, 20, 30 years, and they want to talk to me about, well, maybe we'll want to do a video. Maybe we'll do this What's your return on investment? What do we need to do? And I ask them before we anything else, what are you currently doing? And they just smile real big and tell me, well, just word of mouth and referrals. And then you find out they've also been stuck, plateaued at the same level for years. They haven't been creating content or using lead generating activities. I gave you a couple of examples right here where people used, and, and folks, we're going to talk about a variety of content, but I'm probably going to usually use my own examples. A uh, guy, Stephen Coburn, that we created 12 videos for life insurance policies for people that are high risk. Uh, and this is just a email he sent out, very simple, but it's the content that's in the email marketing. Sure Wealth Management uses Facebook. They do posts, uh, they boost posts and they make ads, but they have content that accompanies that. So think of it this way. Exercise is something we can all relate to. Start of March, we've already given up on our New Year's resolutions. It doesn't work. We're back to square one, right? I had I overheard a conversation the other day. This guy uh, had gotten back into the gym. He started in January. I saw him there. He quit. Now he's back in the gym. He hired a personal fitness trainer. And the personal fitness trainer was asking him what he tried. And he's telling this personal fitness trainer how he's tried one of everything. I mean, he dated it back, too. You know what? Did the Mediterranean diet. We did the uh, burn boot camp P90X DVDs. <clears throat> he even bought the Peloton bike. And then he was explaining how he's tried one of everything once and it didn't work. So the fitness trainer explains to him. So, well, that's not really how this works, period. Here's what we're going to do. And he starts explaining to him about strength training and cardio and eating right. And you can just see the, the, guy, the look on the guy's face. He just kind of deflates like, well... All right. Well, thanks anyways. 
look, here's the example. Exercise tools are the content themselves. The exercise bikes, the elliptical. I said stair climber. I don't know. I haven't seen a stair climber in years. I love those things back in the day. The actual weights themselves, the kettlebells. These are, in fact, the that's content, so to speak. So using <clears throat> the exercise tools is lead generation. That's movement on the exercise machine. That's lifting the dumbbells. That's grabbing the cables and trying to, trying to uh, get the resistance going. So what would happen if you purchased any of this exercise equipment and didn't use it? Talking about that Peloton bike, great example. Uh, what would happen if you did the exercises, but you didn't have the actual resistance? You know, just a little light walking or you're fake pumping, you know, iron here, but you don't have the actual dumbbells. Not much, right? Same as if you're creating content, you have the equipment, let's say, but you don't do anything with it. And I have this all of the time. I see people that will create a video. They'll hire a videographer. They'll hire me. They'll spend time doing it themselves. And then they just kind of lob it out on their website and don't do anything else with it. And say, well, we bought a video, but it didn't work for us. We put it on the website, but it didn't do anything. It just sat there. It's like the Peloton bike that you now use as a uh, coat rack. So you have to do something with it. You have to drive traffic to it, a lead generating activity. And the reverse is true. I am bombarded all of the time on LinkedIn from people that want to generate leads for me. They don't ever talk about content necessarily. They just want to generate leads. Look, you can do a Google ad and just say, hey, buy from me. <clears throat> but if you don't add content, image, helpful guide, a video, whatever, people most likely aren't going to follow through. So you need the both of these things uh, tied together. So content without lead generating activities won't work. Lead generating activities without content won't work. Content is not necessarily a lead generating activity. And yes, I know there are people that tell you that all of the time, that if your content is authentic and personal and frequent, it's just going to hit all the right buttons and the customers will come flowing in and you don't need any lead generating activities. Some of that's true. I call those people unicorns and good for them. The reverse is true. If you just do large volumes of lead generating activities, uh, and some folks will tell you that you don't need any content and you just say, you know, buy from me, buy from me, visit my site, visit my site. And you don't give them something cool, interesting, helpful. Then you're not, you know, you're just kind of spamming at that point. Hit me up in the comments here and tell me if this is making sense to you. So if you're not a unicorn, if you're not a spammer, you're going to need both content and lead generating activities. All right. So that's <clears throat> the first portion. Once we have that, then it is time to figure out how to create your own content easily. And then what are some of the marketing strategies you can use to accompany it? When I say content, forgive me, content is the most overused buzzword that we have going right now. And there's a wide variety of different types of content that you need to create. The first question I get from people is, what type of content should I make? <clears throat> and what they're asking more times than not is, how do I get my TikTok video to go viral? What should I say in the Facebook post to triple the likes? And you see people copying other people's content all of the time, things that have nothing to do with their business whatsoever, whatever the latest Jeff meme algorithm hack is uh, tagging a thousand other people, whatever it is, all of that can maybe get you noticed a little bit, but the content has to be something your customers or future customers really want. So I've broken it down making it very simple here. <clears throat> Let's make the screen a little bigger so you can, see what I'm telling you here. First, answer your clients or potential clients most frequently asked questions. What are the questions you get over and over and over? I saw that we had several insurance agents and financial advisors uh, pop in looking at this uh, LinkedIn live. For example, if you're an insurance agent and let me give you a quick example. I had an insurance agent, James, the insurance agent uh, a while back was trying to convince me that he did not have an interesting enough business that people would pay attention to him online, email marketing through networking events, or whatever else. Insurance is boring. Charles insurance is a commodity. And I didn't get into this thing just to humor people or to try to be a stand-up comedian. I have something that really matters. 
He was getting mad about it too, which I get. After chatting with him for a while, you know, talking to him about what is his motivation for doing this, whatever his most frequently asked questions, we, you know, kind of uncovered first and foremost his origin story, so to speak, about how when he was just a, a little fella, uh, six or seven years old, his house burned down and his parents didn't have proper insurance. And kind of what the hell that put them through going from house to house, trying to rebuild everything on their own. And that is his first piece of content. And then I say, well, what questions do people have about their home, their life, auto, commercial policies? Well, he starts rattling off left and right. Well, Charles, people really don't understand the difference between contents and dwelling. You know, if you took a house and shook it upside down, everything that falls out is, you know, the contents. Well, okay. There's, there's a piece of content on content. And then should people get rental insurance when they rent a car or what, you know, what covers liability, what all of these things, he scratched them all out, pen and paper. And before you knew it, we had 24 different things he had thought of. But the reason I say 12 to 24, you know, gives you a piece of new content, one or two every single month. And when in doubt, check your sent file uh, in your email folder odds are you are answering the same questions over and over and over and you're retyping them each and every time. So create a list. So what should you do with that list? Answer the questions. Really simple. Either create a video or type out the answers. I always say create a video first, primarily because 80% of online traffic is video now and that's only increasing. That is not decreasing. And then you can take the video and have it transcribed and that can be your uh, content or written content. So if you're going to do a little DIY video, I have no issue with that whatsoever. Um, this thing right here, oh, look at my happy family, can be your uh, first foremost thing that you want to use. If you do DIY video, make sure you have a good camera. Make sure you have a good microphone. Make sure, uh, do a little better with the lighting than I did today. Make sure you got a good background like I have with the fake living room. Couldn't show you my real house or you, you wouldn't talk to me anymore. Uh, it's disgusting with the 14, 11 and 10 year old. Get those, get the little tech things first, but don't let it hold you up. So once you create videos, think to answer these questions in 60 to 90 second chunks. Uh, once you answer the questions in the 60 to 90 second chunks, uh, you'll be able to break it down and, and have something palatable, not just for social media, but for the first few times that people hear you. Uh, what you're seeing here on the screen is where I use a tool called Descript, and it's just one of many that's out there. Typeform is another where you can upload your video and it will automatically transcribe it for you and even let you do a little light editing, removing the ums and the you knows and shortening the little gaps. Sit down, knock 12 out. They're going to be rough. You're not going to like them. You're going to think they're the worst things you've ever seen, but it's worth getting started with. You won't get any better without practice. So get those started first. Let them be, get them transcribed. So then let's say you do 24 and you answer 24 most commonly asked questions. You got 24 videos. You have 24 uh, things transcribed. Other video that you can make, professionally created video where uh, somebody comes in. If you have the, uh, afford, uh, the budget for it where you can hire somebody to come in and do some live video for you. Just make sure that it's something that you can use for a long time. And of course, I'm the explainer video guy. I do animated videos a, a lot for busy professionals like a lot of you guys. This uh, is also a more affordable option than in-person video. It is very good for process, explanation, telling stories, and everything else. So once you get started with your own content, you've got your video, you've got written content, clean up the written content, obviously. And there's every tool in the world now that can even do it for you. I've been having a lot of conversations with friends of mine about you, the proper use of chat GPT, Jasper 8.ai and every other tool out there. But a lot of them can take that content, retool it, rewrite it. And then you can clean it back up and put it in your own words and really have something cool written content that can be a blog post. It can turn into a lead magnet. You can take that long 60 to 90 second transcription uh, out of, you know, got your blog post there and you can break it down into three little bits or four little bits and put your own images on there and buy your own images, folks, not the grayscale content that's been out there. When I say grayscale, 
the stock video that's out there that people use that drives me crazy. Uh, it's the same stuff over and over and over. I can go to, and I was picking on insurance agents, financial advisors. If I go to their websites, I can see the same pictures over and over. I say grayscale because everybody's wearing gray or blue uh, or and have gray hair. Use your images, pictures of you, pictures of people in your office, things that somebody else can't copy that will immediately stand out. Put that little blurbs of written content on there. Uh, and, you know, other things you can do, create case studies from people that you are currently working with, create, take the audio out of the video you made and you've got audio clips you can uh, use that you can even reuse uh, their long form video as podcasts. Uh, and God forbid, those of you that still use print material, that's your print material. That's your content. That 24 videos, and I've done the math before, can turn in quickly and easily into over 100 pieces of your own original content. It will be a little bumpy at first, but it doesn't take long to uh, utilize the AI tools, Canva, uh, a virtual assistant to help you tighten those up. Now, once you do that, that's your content. You're answering people's questions. What do you do with it after that? Now it's time to take your content and share it. And I'm going to do this fast and furiously. It will be different for different types of audiences and how you want to do it. First and foremost, it needs to be on your website. Everybody should have an email list. Email is not just not dead. It still trumps to me social media and a wide variety of other tools that are out there. There are still more emails collectively than there are social media accounts combined. And that is a one way, not really algorithm driven thing that you can use. Uh, social media, social media is where you share that content. People are still trying to post left and right and hire kids right out of college to post content and then not giving them anything and then podcasting which is a long-term strategy that i think is a fantastic idea for a lot of you and then even seminars or webinars or whatever like what we're doing now update your website please when i say update your website so many websites i go to do not pass the grunt test i'm using story brands website right here their whole business is helping you clarify your message so people engage, but making it grunt proof. Grunt proof means that if you woke up a caveman right now, chiseled him out of a block of ice, and you sat him in front of the website, could he tell you within three to five seconds what your website is or what you do? And so many websites you go to, they don't have content. Their content is whatever the web developer copied and pasted on there. Again, the grayscale people and then nothing else. If you want people to learn from you, build that no like, and trust factor. Again, through that word of mouth and referrals, if that's all you're doing, the first thing they do is come to your website. They're not picking up a phone and calling you. If you don't have content on there, they're not going to hang out very long and they're not going to build a no like, and trust factor with you. you. Need to have your images, your content, your video here. Blogs aren't dead. And I do get that it wasn't you know, blogging 10 years ago was how everybody in the world thought they were going to be found. But at this point, it's a great place to store your written content that you can use as you engage with people online, as you post your own LinkedIn articles, as you do your newsletters, as you do email, you drive them back to this uh, written content right here. Email marketing. Fire up that email list if you haven't done so. And if your email marketing right now is saying here is the March newsletter for, you know, Compass Financial Advisors. That doesn't engage people very much. Create a headline that they would want to read. And when in doubt, think, what would I open? What would I click on? And it doesn't have to be clickbait driven, just common sense stuff. Um, three things you need to know. People like numbers. Uh, and, you know, again, use some of these online AI tools to help you generate ideas for that. Email marketing also works really well when it's plain text, when it doesn't look like, when it looks like it's from you to me. And when it doesn't look like it's just something that is, uh, you know, got tons of, you, you know, overused photos and everything else with a lot of links to other people's content. It should be your content written directly to them. Get good at copywriting. Use, if you, you know, you already made the videos, use the transcription from it. Clean it up. Here you go. Drive people back to your website. Have them read the blog post there. Oh, and by the way, 
Video works really well in email marketing and you don't need a ton of copy with it. It can be just a 60 second, 90 second. As your customers get to know you a little bit more, two minute, three minute video only right there with a clean button at the bottom, you know, contact us here to discuss whatever's in the video. This is where I really want to clear something up for you. Social media, obviously we're all using it. We're using it right now. It is just one slice of the pie. I cannot tell you the number of times, again, that I'll have people say, well, I, can, I like to use your video. What's your ROI? Well, the video is just content. Well, if I post it to social media, if I post it to Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, how many clients am I going to get? It doesn't work that way. Social media, almost think of it at this point like it's the, the trail you're leaving behind uh, to continue building that no like trust factor. So if somebody learns about you on the golf course, They'll pull up your website. If they like what they see there, second place they go is your social media icons. Do you post regularly? And then is it stuff that I want to learn about? Are you answering my questions? Are you building a no like trust factor? Are you posting once a week and then just throwing out a link to something on Yahoo Finance or whatever, whatever the latest Homer Simpson backing into two shrubs meme looks like? Um, the algorithms. Trends, they change regularly. So just hopping from thing to thing to thing because you heard it worked, that's fine. Uh, but it it's not necessarily a really long-term strategy. Uh, Socialmediaexaminer.com, great place to continue to stay on top of those trends. I trust what they're saying. Real quick, Facebook. I know it's kind of, it, it's, it's not dying, but it's not what it once was. It's a pay-to-play program at this point. If you have... I get this quite a bit. If you have 200 likes, followers, 500, whatever it is, the organic reach is about one to 3%. So whatever you post on your business Facebook page, if you are not boosting it, if you're not running ads to it, if you're not strategic and tagging other people, you know, if it's 200 folks, that's, you know, your followers, you're going to reach for what, four or five people. You got to do more with it than that. It's more parent, grandparent age these days which may be a lot of what you're looking for instagram youth video a uh, youth driven these are vertical videos so when you record your videos record them and a tool like descript can make them both uh, a square and vertical that's why i say 60 to 90 seconds so they can be reels r-e-e-l-s that's important for instagram tiktok even facebook and yep lots of selfies uh insta uh, linkedin we're doing it now it's becoming, you know, not just more popular, but more personal and uh, direct outreach does work. Yes, I know it is annoying and I know I'm part of the problem, that's, but that's maybe why you're here at the moment. Uh, but if you do direct outreach, your own content and write like a human. TikTok, man, I don't know a whole lot about TikTok, uh, but I do know some folks that have made progress with it. Uh, and then there's Twitter. I don't know. Seminars. All of you like to teach seminars or some way, shape, form, or fashion. Brand yourself as the authority, as the expert. You've been out there. You answered the 12 to 24 questions that were most common that people had. Find the biggest hot buttons, which is why I am talking right now about content and lead generation and marketing activities. A lot of the business coaching I do doesn't even revolve around this. It revolves about how to run your business, do more by doing less, how to get focused. But this is the topic that people want to talk about. So I worked on creating content just for this. Answer those questions, put it together. I can take this entire video, assuming I haven't butchered it, and start breaking it down. Uh, but in-person workshops are back people like to see your smiling face if you're a big deal at the chamber of commerce start using some of that content to not just promote the seminars but to give the seminars podcasting again a very long tail thing i have great big plans myself this spring spring early summer to launch my own podcast and i don't expect to see anything for about a year so if you're doing it for that purpose uh, know that it it could very well take a while for that to take off Podcast guesting is also a very good way uh, to bring people to your site, share your content. And then above all else, as you're looking at doing any of this, consider the content creation and generating leads or marketing activities like a doctor's appointment. 
I had knee surgery. Oh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. So that's what I got, Sarah, my lovely wife, uh, a patient to take care of. I did not skip my knee surgery because I got so busy and people do that all of the time. So, hey, uh, Mr. Uh, you know, consultant, coach, hey, uh, we're going to meet this Thursday. You're going to tell me about all the content you created. They show up like, hey, tell me about the content. Well, Charles, you just wouldn't believe it. I just got so busy. It's good to be busy. It's good to be busy unless busy is not productive and it keeps you from doing the things you are supposed to be doing. That's why I say it's like a doctor's appointment. When I go to a doctor's appointment, my business stays intact while I'm gone. The business coaching stays intact while I'm gone. And, and I'm able to think and concentrate in that doctor's office. Create fictional doctor's appointments for yourself. Put them on the calendar. Don't let anything uh, get too busy for doing them. And if you must move it or if you must erase it, you have to replace it. Cheesy, I know. And I don't even remember where I stole that from. Maybe the one thing. That's a fantastic book, by the way. So if you move it, you have to put it back on the calendar and it has to be a priority for content creation and then the lead generating activities. Because if you do not, it, it won't get done. Color code your calendar as well. I've done this for, gosh, almost 20 years. Block off my calendar, color code it. Green means I'm meeting with clients. The reddish part is where I'm out trying to generate activities and the blue is admin stuff that I really don't like doing and need to outsource, period. That gives you a very clear visual. Uh, and then spend real money on your marketing activities. It needs to be about three or five, three to five percent of whatever you're generating on an annual basis. And a lot of people, they get really proud of not spending any money on marketing and then they wonder why they don't have the revenue they want. They don't put the time or the effort into it. It'd be like buying a brand new car, not putting gas in the thing, and then wondering why it, you know, doesn't run anymore. Could you imagine doing that? Calling the dealer up and say, hey, I tried this thing for a while and it didn't work. But we do that all of the time with our own uh, marketing, with our own, you know, content. Well, I tried that once, you know, we did, you know, in-house videos once, that didn't work. We tried explainers once, that didn't work. We went to a networking event. We did Facebook ad. We did a LinkedIn live. You can't try everything once. You have to do it consistently over and over and over. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting on any. Uh, homework for you, create one piece of content that can be repurposed in a few ways. Make that video, turn it into audio, turn it into text, and then try it on a few different platforms just to kind of see what folks think of it. Um, not here to promote myself, but visit yourcharlesalexander.com if you already have uh, two or three videos in mind and you want them professionally animated and put you in the video, that's what I do. Uh, it's just one piece of the puzzle. You shouldn't rely solely on any of these, but this is one that I can help with. Any questions, uh, pop them right here into uh, the comments. I can't reply. I can only answer them verbally. Uh, otherwise, you can reach me at yourcharlesalexander.com or you can reach me here on LinkedIn or email me at charles at yourcharlesalexander.com. That's it. Thanks, folks.